In this video, I'm going to unbox Oppo's new 203 4K Blu-ray player and go through the video settings in the user menu for initial setup. Coming right up. Hi everyone, this is Vincent Thiel from HTTV Test here. I'm a professional TV reviewer and calibrator. In this channel, we do scientific TV reviews, unboxing videos like this, video interviews, and also settings tips and tricks. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing by clicking the button right here. The Oppo 203 ships in a typical brown box that you see with any AV hardware like receivers and 4K Blu-ray players. So let's open this uh, box right up and see what we have inside. Okay, and we are first greeted by a cardboard sheet that outlines the main feature of the UDP 203 Ultra HD Blu-ray display. Um, Obviously, it plays Ultra HD Blu-ray with a high dynamic range support. And it's interesting to see a Blu-ray 3D logo there, even though most of the 2017 sets won't be supporting 3D. And it supports all the necessary audio formats as well, Dolby and DTS. And then we have a manual, which is inside a plastic bag. I won't uh, bother opening it. And let's uh, have a look at uh, the accessories box in the first place and see what we have here. Okay, two AA batteries for the remote, which is always good, so that you don't have to run out to the store and buy one just in case you are excited about opening up your <laughs> new shiny new 4K Blu-ray player and you have no batteries to operate it. Um, this is the remote control. Uh, let's uh, open up the plastic bag and see what's new here. It's a typical Oppo remote and the keys presumably are going to be backlit from the looks of it. And I see that from previous Oppo remotes, the, the, main, the, difference, the one difference that I can actually see here is that there's a dedicated HDR button on the remote itself. And I always like this resolution button. It allows, uh, on previous Oppo remote, it has always allowed me to change the resolution on the fly of the disc itself. For example, we want to test standard definition deinterlacing, uh, film mode deinterlacing, and video mode deinterlacing. Just one press of this button allows us to just toggle through the different resolution. And you can just use the direct source option, which will replicate what is actually on the source itself. Very, very useful. Right. I shall go through the different uh, button presses when we get set up, uh, when we plug the TV in and we go through the video settings. Uh, right. Uh, HDMI cable, which has been certified as premium. So hopefully this will pass all the necessary HDMI 2.0a HDR metadata, maybe in 422 and maybe even in 444. Um, uh, it will be sufficient uh, enough to actually to ever have a high enough bandwidth to transmit those data. And we have a power cable here. This is the three pin pack version for British users out there. And another power cable with a European plug for European users. And we move on to the unit itself. Let's uh, open it up. Okay. Like previous Oppo machines, it comes with a shopping bag and there's a new 4K Ultra HD logo here which lets uh, your when you bring the shopping bag to your local supermarket so the store managers and the cashiers will know that you have upgraded to a brand new 4k ultra hd machine Okay, 
the unit feel was very, very solid, very, very premium feel to the entire ensemble, uh, the OPPO logo. In front, there's a brush, gunmetal grey, kind of a kind of a finish, uh, power button here, eject button here, some other buttons here, a USB port, and the display has been moved to the center of the of the chassis, the disc tray uh, just above the, the display unit there. If we turn around the back, you can see two HDMI outputs, uh, which is similar to what the Panasonic and Samsung 4K Blu-ray players uh, offer. Uh, the reason there are two HDMI outputs is that the main HDMI out will be capable of sending out HDMI 2.0a with HDCP 2.2 signal. However, if you have a legacy AV equipment like uh, an older AV receiver or a Samba which doesn't support HDCP 2.2, then you can route the audio to your AV receiver while sending the picture with HDCP 2.2 directly to your 4K television which obviously supports HDCP 2.2. There's a HDMI in port as well, but from what we understand from OPPO, it doesn't actually transmit HDMI 2.0a data, metadata, so it doesn't actually transmit HDMI metadata at all. There's an optical and a coaxial audio output, two USB 3.0 inputs to go with the one in the front, a serial port, presumably for service menu and stuff. And, it, oh, it's interesting to see that there are there's a 12 volt trigger in and out. So this will be used in custom installation for automatic switch on, switch off uh, and various other controls, uh, integration within uh, uh, an, an automation unit. And OPPO obviously is a very, very premium, very, very top tier product and it will appeal to custom installers and customers with high end AV setups uh, for, for total integration and then all the outputs with gold plating and a power socket completes the connections at the back. Okay, let's connect this baby up to a 4K TV and see what it can do. Okay, so I've hooked up the OPPO 203 to an LG C6 OLED. The first thing I notice is that the remote control lights up whenever you pick it up because of an inbuilt motion sensor. This is a new feature that's not found on previous OPPO Blu-ray players. It's going to be very very useful in a dark theatre room. Let's go through the user menu settings, especially in terms of video output. You can press the setup button on the remote to go directly to the setup menu. Or you can just go to the home screen and scroll to the setup. The UI is so responsive, so much quicker than the, the OPPO 103 and 105. It makes it actually a joy to navigate through these menus here. Let's go to video output setup, which is what we are actually interested in. The first submenu is the picture adjustment submenu, which allows you to adjust various parameters such as brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, and noise reduction from the source disk before sending it to your 4K TV. Normally, it is best to leave all these values at their default values of zero because what we want is an unaltered video output from the player which preserves the artistic intent of the director. However, in some rare cases, brightness and contrast can be quite useful to rectify the crush blacks or clip highlight detail which cannot be corrected by the in-TV controls. You can also get directly to the picture adjustment menu by pressing the picture button uh, on the remote itself. Under HDR settings, there are various choices and for most users, the best setting will be auto. So if the player detects a TV that is HDR capable, it will automatically send out the HDR version from a 4K Blu-ray disc. Street metadata can be quite useful, especially for projector owners. The reason is because projectors can never reach the peak brightness of modern HDR TVs, and triggering HDR mode usually means elevating the black floor and sacrificing the inky blacks that JVC DILA and to a lesser extent Sony XSRD projectors are capable of delivering. As a compromise, what some projector owners have been doing is to buy an external device such as the HD Fury Integral 
to remove HDR metadata from 4K Blu-rays so their projectors won't go into HDR mode but they can still benefit from the Rec 2020 white color gamut from 4K Blu-ray disc. If they switch off HDR completely from the player itself, what will happen is that the player will be sending out SDR or standard dynamic range output with Rec 709 normal color gamut. From what we understand, Strip metadata is an experimental feature and a work in progress, but we'll be checking it out during our review to see how effective it is. Target luminance is used for HDR to SDR conversion if your TV is not HDR capable. If you know the maximum light output of your TV, then you can put the figure here. The OPPO 203 will then use this number to decide how aggressively it wants to map the source luminance from the disk itself to your SDR TV. For output resolution, the default setting is Auto, which will work for most people. You can also select many custom resolution. I absolutely love the Source Direct function. As part of my job reviewing TVs, I test video and film mode the interlacing and it's important that I make sure that the player sends out an interlace signal otherwise I'll be testing the, the interlacing capabilities of the player itself. Source Direct lets me do that very very easily. My interlace test pattern will be transmitted as interlace at the correct frame rate too, 50Hz for PAL, 60Hz for NTSC and so on and so forth. Let's set this back to auto. Color space and color depth can be quite confusing. It will probably take me a full two hours to explain them properly, so I'll try to do a brief version. Under color space, you'll see various options, such as RGB video level, RGB PC level, YCBCR444, YCBCR422, YCBCR420. Now, video on 4K Blu-rays are stored at 10 bit 420. And after all the conversion, all the processing, all the upsampling have been said and done, the colors will be output on the, your TV screen as RGB, corresponding to the red, green, and blue subpixels. Now, RGB signal contains the full brightness and color information, similar to YCBCR444. Because color scientists have worked out that our eyes are inherently more sensitive to brightness resolution, and less sensitive to color resolution, 422 and 420 are formats that have been developed to lower the bandwidth required to transmit video data. 444 means that it's full brightness or luma and full color or chroma resolution. 422 means that there's full luma resolution but chroma is reduced by half in the horizontal direction. 420 means that it is still full luma, but chroma is reduced by half in both the horizontal and the vertical directions. Now, on the disk itself, it's 420, and eventually it will end up being RGB or 444 on the TV screen. There's another very, very small problem. 420, at least at 24Hz, isn't officially listed under the HDMI timing specs, even though it is actually used for storage. So at the very minimum, the player will have to convert or upsample the 420 video data from the disk itself to 422 before it can be sent out through the HDMI port. Some players, like this OPPO 203, can even sample, upsample the, video, the, the data all the way to 444 or RGB. So this is what happens with different color space settings. If you select YCBCR420, the OPPO 203 will send out the data as 422 anyway, because 420 at 24 frames per second is just not a legal HDMI signal. If you select YCBCR422, the OPPO will upsample the 420 data on 4K Blu-ray disc to 422 and then send 422 to the TV. The TV will then upsample it to 444 to display. If you select YCBCR444, the OPPO will upsample up the disk 420 data all the way up to 444 
before sending it to the TV. The difference between these two is where the 422 to 444 chroma upsampling takes place. If you select for YCBCR422, it takes place in the TV. If you select YCBCR444, it takes place in the player. Now, the million dollar question is, which is the correct setting? Unfortunately, there are just too many variables, so it should really be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. In theory, you would have thought that it's best to let the player do the chroma upsampling from 4 to 0 all the way up to 444. But because 444 uses more bandwidth than 422, you may find that your HDMI cable, especially if it's an older one or a long one, doesn't have enough bandwidth to transmit 4K video at 444, resulting in HDMI signaling problems. Or, let's say you have a high-quality HDMI cable that can transmit 4K video at 444, but because of the higher bandwidth of 444, the TV will need more processing power to accept, process, and convert this YCBCR444 signal to RGB before it can be displayed. On some TVs, using up this processing power for 444 processing actually means that there won't be enough processing power for other video processing features such as frame interpolation or film mode film deinterlacing. If you have owned a high-end Panasonic TVs, this is what the 1080p Pure Direct or 4K Pure Direct function does. Once you engage these functions, you lose access to intelligent frame creation and also film cadence mode. Slow panning shots in 24Hz movies will also look more juddery because there's just not enough processing power to perform 5.5 pull-down. Some other TVs may even convert the incoming 444 or RGB signal down to 422 before re-upsampling it back up to 444. This happens because at least one of the internal processing chips is designed to work only with 422 format. Depending on the quality of the downsampling and upsampling, this extra step of processing may actually make the image look worse. And of course, not all chroma's upsampling is of the same quality. Even within the same machine, 420 to 422 and 422 to 444 can be very different in quality. As I said before, there are just too many variables. So unless you have the necessary test patterns and experience to thoroughly test your entire video chain, it's probably just best to leave color space at auto. The same applies to color depth, where you can select auto, 12-bit, 10-bit, or 8-bit. If you have a display that can handle 12-bit video properly, you should, as a general rule of thumb, to try and select 12-bit, even though all 4K Blu-ray discs are encoded in 10-bit. The reason is because all this upsampling, downsampling, not to mention other video processing, may introduce quantization errors and posterization artifacts, and having 12-bit to work with will provide a buffer for all these errors to be smoothed out. Going for 12-bit output despite a 10-bit source is not to increase the color fidelity at all, but it is actually to reduce the, the, the amount of artifacts. Of course, some televisions don't have the capacity to properly handle incoming 12-bit signal, so they will display like posterization or banding, in which case you have no choice but to use 10-bit. I recommend setting uh, color depth to auto as always, and if you see posterization or banding, uh, shots of skies are generally very good at showing it up, for example in The Martian, The Revenant, Kingsman, uh, try experimenting with different permutations of color space and color depth to see which one gives you the least posterization, the smoothest gradient, the least posterization or bending. If you set output resolution, color space and color depth all to auto, you can actually see what the OPPO 203 is outputting by holding down the info button on the remote control. I'll show you. So hold down the info button. Scroll down, and you can see that the OPPO 203 is sending out a BT2020 YCBCR444 12-bit signal to the LG C6 OLED. Another interesting data that you can actually get from holding down the info button 
is the peak brightness to which 4K Blu-ray movies have been mastered. You can see that the maximum luminance here is 1000 nits. This means that this disc has been graded to around 1000 nits generally on uh, Sony BVM X300 broadcast OLED monitors. Some discs are mastered to 4000 nits, usually on a uh, Dolby Pulsar. So, there you have it. An unboxing video of the OPPO 203 4K Blu-ray player and a run-through of the video settings in the setup menu. If you have anything you would like us to check while we are reviewing the player, especially if it's related to video, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have found it useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. See you the next time.